This is a brief introduction to Python classes. When we talk about a class, we're talking about collections of functions and variables. Okay, so here is a class. Uh, this might have a particular function and also uh, variables or data um, that we have. And then we might have instances of these as well. So let me just use the analogy that maybe our class is going to be a uh, person. Okay, we're going to define a new person. And then uh, of that class, we'll have a, um, this inheritance or instance of this uh, class. And we'll call the first person that we create is going to be Eric, and then Jane, and then maybe Isaac. Okay, now each of these are, uh, people are going to have um, particularly customized um, variables. So maybe hair color, um, career, uh, other things that uh, might be unique to the individual. We'll set those up, but then each of these instances, okay, so these are going to be instances of the class um, that are going to inherit all of the functions and variables and data but then change those um, to be tailored to the particular instance. Okay, um, one other thing that uh, we'll be talking about is scope as well. So there are certain variables that are defined that um, are going to be common to all of the instances or some that are going to be unique to each particular um, instance. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and open up IPython um, and uh, just go through an example here. Okay, so I'm going to open up the IPython notebook, and then once that opens, um, I'll go to my desktop, and I'll just put it uh, there, just a new Python notebook, and I'll call this uh, Python uh, Classes. Okay, so I'm going to, to create a new class in Python, um, you just type uh, class, and then the class name. So I'll do person. And in this, um, in this, I'm going to um, maybe say this is the uh, name, okay, of uh, of the person. And um, and I'll just initialize it as a uh, string. Okay. So let me insert a cell below. Um, and then to create a new person, I can say that. Um, Let's see, I'm going to say that uh, the person1 equals, and then I'll say that is going to be a person with name uh, Eric. Okay, I don't have um, anything defined to initialize that yet, so I can initialize it after I create the person. So person1.name equals Eric, for example. Okay, and then if I insert a cell below, then I can just print out uh, person one uh, name. Okay, and then uh, that will give me the name of Eric. Okay, so if I want to insert um, another uh, person, person two equals person, um, and then P2 name equals uh, Jane, and then I'll print uh, P2 uh, name, and just to make sure the other one didn't change, P1 name as well. Okay, so I have Jane and Eric. But let's say there's a couple things that we want to add, like let's say, um, what are some of their skills? Okay, now um, this is where it gets just a little bit tricky uh, because we have uh, variables that are shared with, uh, with all of the instances um, and some that are unique each of the instances. I'm going to show you a little bit better way to program this this class uh, so that we get um, you know just individualized data when we want it or uh, shared or common data when we want it. Okay so I'm just going to add um, I'm going to define a new function in this uh, so this would be like um, you know within the class then uh, we can define new functions like we want to add a skill so when they get new training or things we're going to um, uh, then define um, a new function called add skill and uh, I'm going to for all of these I'll have the first uh, argument 
is going to be self. So that's going to tell me which instance is calling uh, this function. And then I'll add a skill. Um, and then um, I'll use the append um, to append a skill to this, uh, to this individual. OK, so um, to do that, um, let's see. I'm going to do self uh, dot uh, skills um, dot append. And then I'll add the particular skill that um, came from from this person. Okay, so I'm just going to consolidate uh, these two. I'll create uh, person one and person two. Um, and let's just rename Jane right up here. Okay, so I've got person one and person two. Okay, and then uh, let me go ahead and just delete uh, these right there. Okay, so just clean it up a little bit so we can see um, adding some skills. And um, I'll also print uh, P1 name and then uh, P2 name again. And then what I want to do is add a skill. Um, so I'm going to do P1 um, add skill. So this one I just want to add this skill for Eric. Um, and I'm going to say that um, Eric is going to be an engineer and he can uh, solve uh, math problems. Okay, and then uh, Jane, she is a manager and uh, I'm going to add a skill. She can uh, balance a budget. Okay, and, um, and then let me go ahead and print um, P1 uh, skill. Okay, so that would be skills, and uh, let's just see what this does. Okay, so we had an error here, um, has no attribute uh, add skill. Let me go ahead and I go to run all of these again because I've changed this. Okay, so I'll go ahead and run it all again. So um, P1 skills, Eric now has the ability to solve math problems and balance a budget, but I only wanted that for Jane instead. So um, in the case of name, I was able to uh, change that for Eric and Jane, but um, the way to get around this is I want to add skills for each individual instance. And so I'm going to actually define a new function within my class and uh, if you do the two underbars there and then init and then two more underbars um, then that is going to allow you to um, describe just initialized um, initialized qualities or variables for each of these um, instances okay and then um, I'm going to have name and then skills okay so then I can add just for each particular instance, in this case Eric and Jane, I can add different skills for each. And then if I want to, um, I can also just initialize um, with their name right from the start. Okay, so um, let's see, I'll do a, uh, instead of that, I'll do, yeah, I'll do name right here. And then this one will be self. Um, self dot name and then self dot skills okay and then when I initialize this it's going to take one argument which is going to be the name and then I'll give them some skills later okay, so then I don't have to populate it like this um, it will run again so let me go ahead and run all okay and then in this case um, I have uh, the P1 name and P2 name, um, and those are both blank, okay? Because what I needed to do was this name that came in, I need to assign that instead of blank right here when it initializes to that name that I input as an argument. Okay, I'll just run that again. Okay, so now P1 is Eric and P2 is has the name of Jane and Jane, or this is um, Eric can solve math problems. And then if I want to add additional skills, let's say, um, 
you know, in addition to solving math problems, Eric can uh, design in a computer aided design program, uh, in a CAD program. Okay, and then when I run it again, um, then uh, Eric can solve math problems and design in a CAD program. Okay, so um, this is, a, so just to summarize, this is a new class um, where I've defined some variables that were common to all of the, uh, all of the instances. Um, and, but then I also made them uh, specific to the different instances as well. Okay, so to do that, you just define this init. You can put other arguments in there as well. So let's say um, we'll put profession in there as well. And Eric is um, maybe an engineer and Jane is a manager. Okay, and then I can define a new one as well. And so that'll be self dot profession, uh, and then I can that becomes part of uh, the instance that I have for each. Okay, so um, I can print out something that uh, is just a little bit more meaningful here. Um, is um, and okay, I guess it doesn't work. A you'll have to see if it's an or a for each of these. I'll just put an because I know what it is, uh, but p1.profession. Uh, um, and then when I do that, uh, let's see, I have profession. Um, let's see, I have invalid syntax. Oh, I forgot the plus sign between that. Okay, and another takes two arguments. Okay, I've got to in IPython, you've got to run these cells again. Sometimes you just want to go run all, and then it'll fix it. Okay, so Eric is an engineer, and then I have Jane's name, and I added some skills, and then I printed the skills for Eric. Okay, um, let me just show you one other uh, way to define some of these uh, properties as well. You can also, um, here you can just add to an instance. So let's say there's something that, um, Jane didn't have as part of her property properties, and uh, let's say um, we want to inventory what they drive for their car. Okay, so the car that Jane is going to drive is going to be a uh, Ferrari. Okay, and then um, I can now print uh, P2 uh, car. Okay, so now she's driving a Ferrari. I just added that. Um, if my class that I defined the instance from didn't include that variable, I can just add it here by adding p2 dot and then the variable that I want. Um, but Eric is not going to have um, a car, for example. So if I print uh, p1 dot car, um, then uh, it says there's no attribute to car. So if I wanted all of these uh, people to have a car, I would need to add it uh, here, uh, for example, self.car, or if they all drive the same car, uh, the good, a good practice would be to initialize it here in the, um, in the class, okay? So you can do it either place. I'll go ahead and do it as a uh, self, uh, self.car, and I'll just initialize that as um, a blank string and then when I run this again then I can see that uh, okay let me run this top one again I'll just, or just run all here okay so Eric does not have a car okay um, okay so that uh, that concludes uh, this brief brief introduction to classes uh, classes are very flexible structures to help you organize uh, relationships between data and and uh, in an object oriented fashion so you can include uh, functions or also um, also different you know variables data in this class and then define specific instances of the class um, and just to conclude I just wanted to show uh, just one example of a script that uh, I wrote in uh, in Python just to do parallel programming of uh, optimization. Okay, so 
Uh, if I open up this, this is a multi-threaded um, application. So uh, what this does is uh, it imports, uh, it also uses threading, another uh, package in, in Python, but I, de I created a new class called my thread. And uh, I defined, uh, basically initialized it with just an ID. Okay, so an identification number. And then uh, I also gave it a delay. So just a random number between zero and one. And then, um, and then I called uh, thread uh, dot init self here for the threading part of it. Okay, so what I want to do is create multiple of these instances that are each going to become a thread. And then what it's going to do when it runs is it's basically just going to sleep for whatever the delay was. And then um, it'll print out the time after it sleeps. And then it'll print a statement that said, ah, now I completed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just create some threads. Okay, I'll create 10 of them. Um, I'll just append them to an array and then I'll start it. Okay, so these will run all independently. So I created um, so this class, and then I have 10 instances of that class, and then I'm going to start them all at the same time. And they'll go out, and if you have, for example, 10 processors, it'll run on these 10 processors um, independently. And then uh, I'll say, how many threads do I have? And I'll wait for the threads to complete, and then print that they have completed. Okay, so let me go ahead and run those. And uh, you can see that I created um, the threads. Okay, and now there are two threads that were just because of Python um, and, uh, and something else. Okay, so I actually had 10 there, but it was three through 12. And then I just printed out the threads and then each of those threads ran and then uh, pr printed a message. Okay, so this is multi-threaded programming with classes. Um, and then, uh, you know, so this is just a simple example, but what I was really interested in doing is developing, uh, you know, for optimization. Sometimes optimization problems take a while to solve. So I wanted to set this up as a multi-threaded application to do parallel processing for, um, for optimization. So I did this. Um, here I have, uh, you know, so it's kind of a long application. But what I want to do is just show something real that's uh, running. So this is going to run a, a number of optimization problems. It's going to run these nonlinear programming problems on a server that has 64 CPUs and uh, be able to utilize all 64 CPUs. And then when it's done, it ran all of these optimization problems and then showed me, um, you know, the results for all of them. If I would have run these um, individually, it would have taken. Um, you know, a long, much longer time. So, um, so this is an example of using a class, okay? And then I had individual instances of that class that ran an individual optimization problem. And because I was able to design it as a class with these threads, um, I could do this parallel programming. So just a, a brief example of the power of classes and how we can use those um, to program and, and be a little bit more uh, efficient.